Hello, this is just a technical video really. It's an introduction to how the church will look this Sunday when we reopen for public worship and how I hope the distribution of communion will work as well. So if you want to just get an idea of, of what will happen, then this, this should be a good help. Services this Sunday will be at eight o'clock and at 9.45, they will be the normal services that we usually get at those times. Live streaming will continue, we'll live stream the 9.45. Sunday Club, children are obviously more than welcome to St Mary's, but there won't be an official Sunday Club as such. Sunday Club will continue to meet by Skype, so do get in touch with the parish office if you want to be part of that. If not, could parents please make sure that um, they are responsible for their children? The Bible stories in a bag will be available so kids can, can amuse themselves with that. And if you need an escape room, then the Memorial Chapel will be open. You will be met by a welcomer. This Sunday, it'll be Dean Glasgow. He will not only be welcoming you, he will be counting you because the maximum number of people allowed in the church is 66. So do please come on time and please don't fight with the church warden if you are number 67. Just come to the next service. As we go in you will see the hand sanitizing point. So we ask everyone to maintain social distancing at all times but also to use the hand sanitizing point on entry. This is how the church will look when you come in. All the seats have been carefully positioned so that they are two metres apart. There will be a welcomer, but what their job will be is to make sure you get to your seat as quickly as possible and sit down. One of the big infection points, of course, is people meeting and greeting each other. So we would ask that you come in and take your seat as soon as possible. There are further sanitising points by the kitchen hatch and by the memorial chapel. The loos will be open, the kitchen will be closed. The eight o'clock service will take place here as normal. The only difference will be that I won't be processing in. I will be already up behind the altar. Your service booklets will be on your seats. When you've finished at the end of the service, there is a blue box um, by the step. If you can put your booklets back in the blue box, then they can be quarantined in time for next week's service. In order to maintain social distancing, I'll ask that only three people come up to the communion rail at a time, and there is a, a little blue please stand here sticker that enables you to know where to stand to maintain social distancing. This is how the church will look for the 9.45 service. Only I will be up here in the chancel and I will be in place before the service begins, so there's no processing. I will read other people's intercessing, intercessions, but the intercessors and the readers will not be up here so that we can maintain social distancing. You won't need service booklets because everything you need will be up on the screen. If you can't see the screen, there will be large print, a few large print booklets over by the Memorial Chapel on the hand sanitising station. Sadly, we are not able to sing yet, but we will have Richard playing the organ at various points throughout the service. Perhaps the biggest changes will be seen in the way we distribute communion. So the peace, just as before we locked down, the peace won't be physically shared. I will just say the peace be with you and you will respond and also with you. There will be no collection, you'll be pleased to hear, 
and also our card reader has broken, so there isn't even that opportunity. Communion will be in one kind only. Only I will be drinking the wine, so it will just be to the congregation, it will just be the bread. The bread will remain covered the whole time. Apparently one of the um, sites of infection is, is speaking over consumables, so we won't be doing that. It will remain covered the whole time, except for the moment of epiclesis, when the lid will be taken off. Only the priest's wafer will be touched by me during this bit of the service. The distribution will take place in silence. So I will say the body of Christ to everybody, and you will respond, Amen, and the blood of Christ to everyone, and you will respond, Amen. I will sanitize my hands before I take communion, before I do the epiclesis, and before I distribute the communion to everybody else. You will be asked to come up in groups of seven, because that is how we can maintain social distancing. We want to minimize queuing. There are seven little please stand here stickers by the altar rail. Please don't kneel at the altar rail. Remain standing. Your seats have been numbered in batches of seven to help with this. We don't want a sidesman because that, once again, is just another person um, wandering around. So if you can make a note of the number of your seat, and then you will know in what order you will be coming up to communion. So when people on number two seat have sat down, then you will be able to get up. So we will come up in groups of seven, stand. I will distribute the communion wearing a mask in silence. I will drop the bread into your cupped hands to minimize possibilities of infection. Then that seven will sit down, and once that group has sat down, then the next number will get up and come to the altar rail. In this way, we can minimize traffic and people moving past each other. When the service is over, I will go straight out of the door and stand at a distance from the church door. And if you could all leave promptly and move away from the door outside once you've done so. There will be, we're not able to serve tea or coffee at the moment. The church building will be closed and cleaned immediately after each service, and it will also be cleaned in the evening. We will not be asking for names and addresses at the door. What we will be doing instead is relying on you, if any of you feel ill or have the symptoms of coronavirus, to contact, after you've been to a service, to contact me or Joe at the parish office and let us know. And then we will alert the whole of the electoral roll that somebody who has been unwell has attended a service. And that way we will be able to, you will be able to be contacted if you need to. I would really encourage you to sign up to be on the electoral roll if you want to come to church, because that way um, communications can be maintained. <laughs>